Well, what happened in England in the 18th century was they had traditionally what's called, they had this sort of home-oriented uh, uh, spinning uh, and, uh, and weaving. And it was literally, it was, it was in cottages, and that's where our term cottage industry comes from. <clears throat> well, what happened was, uh, Arkwright and others, we'll get to in a moment, transformed all that into the factory system. Uh, this is, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, the town of Cromford in England, uh, north of London, about an hour and a half train ride. It's where the first water-powered uh, uh, factory, cotton textile factory, uh, was developed and built. You can see the stream that feeds it is still there. <coughs> uh, this is the entrance to the factory, and as a friend of mine who was sort of showing me the place observed, it has a kind of fortress-like character. And these two windows facing each other were where you could Get the, those who were attacking the, the fort in a crossfire. Uh, so uh, it was, in, and what happened was there were riots uh, by the Luddites, as they called themselves, who were displaced workers from these, these looms and these little cottage industry places. When all this came in, they were, uh, they were no longer independent. They were totally dependent on the wages supplied by the owner. And they didn't object to the machinery so much as the fact that they were poorer than they were working for themselves. So to this day, the Luddites are sort of famous for opposing the, the uh, <coughs> slavery aspect of, of uh, industrial revolution. Well, what happened was these tremendous uh, factories grew up <coughs> and just a few um, few images of these. Uh, I'm always reminded of Marx's phrase in the manifesto about the transition from feudalism to capitalism. He said the most heavenly ecstasies were drowned in the icy waters of egotistical calculation. Uh, and they were tremendous. Everybody who visited them was a tremendous um, convergence of manpower, of machinery on a large scale, and so forth. Uh, and pictures like this remind me of the famous Wobbly song by Ralph Chaplin. In the gloom of mighty cities, we are toiling on like chattel slaves of old. And our masters hope to keep us ever thus beneath their heels and to coin our very lifeblood into gold. So this, even though you know it had this kind of impressive aspect, it was also it was child labor and so forth. Pollution was terrible. Uh, here's child labor and uh, there are hundreds of photographs of children working in these places. Uh, and this, like I say, they were very impressive, the tremendous scale of these uh, machines. <clears throat> but uh, as I say, there was uh, widespread poverty among those who worked in, the, in these places. Uh, this is the railroads came along, and that was part of the Industrial Revolution. This is uh, actually in uh, a photograph from Australia, so that this thing spread not only out of England to America and France and Germany and Australia and so on. Well, we talk about communication. How does that figure in? Well, the, the, <coughs> the transatlantic cables were established, built, laid, let's say. The first one in 1858 didn't work very well, but the second one in 1866 was better. Uh, and uh, you know, we have the steam-powered ocean transportation. And this is inside one of the ships where they're taking out the cable to be laid. Uh, 